for the address of the new Secretary General. Today is a day of uh, great relief uh, for Dr. Dubai. <laughs> and also, I think, for Judge Christian Bravo for having completed this uh, enormous task of getting us all around this table. Uh, it's a great relief for Dr. Dubai because I'm feeling the weight just now as I stand here that she has carried. So courageously, so much dedication, hard work, and sacrifice. And his predecessor, let's not forget, for many years, Sir Ibn And they have set such high standards in commitment, in dedication, that it filled me, to be very frank, with a great deal of trepidation. But then uh, I'm encouraged that even prophets do not remove. Uh, immune from such feeling. The word al muzammil and al muddathar explain the kafir, the condition of the Prophet given the responsibility of leading a community and a message in a hostile environment. The cover the shrouded one. I think God is uh, announcing that it is already decided was a bit unfortunate for me because it took a few nights sleep away from me. But the good thing was it gave me time to at least jot some points down. Because if I thought it is going to happen, perhaps then I should be somewhat prepared, or I would be very unprepared if I was just summoned. A few moments after being given this responsibility. Reflecting over those few days and what could be the prescription and my provision for this arduous journey and difficult journey that lies ahead, which uh, I'm aware, conscious, that can at times become quite steep, uh, rough, and lonely. And that is something which, when I put to my family, my daughter was a very good judge, of what I should do and should not do, or categorical, no, who you should not think it. But others were a bit more encouraging. That we get one life and the opportunity to serve the community, the Ummah, then you should pull yourself and try to do it and have thought of our Allah. The provision for the journey I take is exactly what was given to the Prophet. And Allah mentioned this condition as, as Muzammil and Mutas, which was Umilayim. Stand in prayer and not in Quran, recite the Quran, turn to the book for guidance, for support. And leave the things and matters which are not important, Bahjurum, Hajjurum, Jamila, the people who want to distract you, take your time to ridicule at you. And of course, for staying with somebody or Salah and seek help from, for, uh, from Salah and steadfastness. So I pray to Allah that He may grant me these provisions for this journey, that He may give me in those times when it will get tough and difficult the ability to hold on to what is right and what is correct and what is true. And inshallah, with your support, this is not one man organization. This is not even leadership you elected. The leadership was sitting downstairs when we had all those affiliates here. They were the leaders. What we are is a team to serve them and the rest of the community. So let us try to do that. And the, uh, I'd like to also thank those who uh, who uh, placed their confidence in me, I think out of their good conjecture, Islamic teaching was still done, or seeing what they see from outside, and, uh, and thus giving me this great position of honor 
and uh, great position of privilege, which I'm aware of. I would also, like, also like to thank those who did not and tried hard to save me from this test and this trial. Those who stood, I think that was an effort. And colleagues who have known me, they would tell you that those who are encouraging me and trying to gather support, whatever, to the very last minute I've been fighting with them to spare me from this responsibility. Right, inshallah, is a position of great honor for me and I accept it with great humility, deep humility, and with the prayer, Rabbi Habli, Hukman, Wa Hukmi, Bi Salihin, Wa Jali, Bi Salih, Sutlin, Bi Akhari. This beautiful prayer which says, My Lord, endow me with wisdom and knowledge, and join me with the righteous, and grant me an honorable reputation among future generations. Because getting out of such responsibility with honor is an important something that you worry about. But my support and tawakkul is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your support. I accept this great position of responsibility as an opportunity, above all, an opportunity to build on the great work that has been done. I know this morning somehow the whole discussion went into negative. And people forgot that they have in their hands a printed copy of the previous year's report, 48 pages, a draft copy of this year's report, the year which is concluded, which shows that with little money, with your hard work and many other volunteers who work, who come to office, who run day and night, who spend money from their own pockets, whose family sacrifice, whose children wait in their homes as they have done this wonderful work. But MCP is not a finished article. I'll be the first to admit. And I'm sure you all recognize that. It's work in progress. And many of the issues which have been highlighted this morning in the assembly, women's participation, is crucial. And we have to make strategies and report back. I'd like to give this to have a plan when you say the title of the plan is engagement of our sisters, our women out there. And point number one, two, three, four, five, that we will undertake to do a CWC mission. I'd like to see that and then we monitor progress, what progress has been made. The missing communities, we highlighted that we are mainly a South Asian or becoming South Asian organizations. Uh, organization. From that perspective, I'd like to welcome for example, somebody like Ufuk here today, who represents originally a Turkish community, a very strong, vibrant Turkish community in London, not far from where MCV offices. We need to engage with this community. We need to bring them into fold. Similarly, Somali community and many other new arrivals in this country are not represented. And it may well be that there are barriers, internal barriers, external barriers, the way we communicate which is preventing them. And again, we need a strategy. Identify what are the barriers. What is it that they don't like or they feel uncomfortable about? And address them and make this organization a comfortable place for all ages, all genders, and all communities. And that will be then an MCB, which will be able to achieve its real purpose, serve its real purpose and goal. I accept this uh, position, as I said, as an opportunity to build that kind of organization, to promote cooperation, consensus, and unity amongst Muslim communities, to build greater harmony in our society. Let us be that agent for harmony. Whatever media is trying to do, so, dis so uh, seeds of discord and hatred, but we must be the organization which can stand for that harmony and accepted by the fellow citizens, seen and recognized by the fellow citizens to be doing exactly that. That's also an opportunity also to celebrate the good work, the wonderful work with our many affiliates to around the country. I'll be the first to admit the best one has not won this. We may not be the best people to lead this community, 
Best people may still be outside. Best person, perhaps that mother who goes out in the morning, takes her children and Muslim sister, who's educated, who is professional, who is putting her hard work and labor to bring up decent human beings in this country, and yet people judge her for her dress. That is not acceptable. And those are the people, once we have facilitated such rich talent out there to be amongst us, we perhaps will be able to say, yes, now we have got the best leadership to lead MCD and the Muslim community. And then standing for justice. We all know that the whole purpose of sending the prophets was the human nasbilkas, to establish mankind on justice. Our voice should at the end be a voice for justice, recognized as voice for justice. Not for opposition, not for appeasement, but just pure, simple justice. And we should remain, stand to be corrected if a statement of our, a press release of our, is actually deviates from justice. Be just for that is nearest thing to godliness. So that is the, should be the position by which we should judge all things. If it goes against even ourselves, our own community, our whole ummah, then we should be ready to accept that and make the amendment. This concept of istighfar, I'm speaking here for many learned uh, ulama, but they would accept that istighfar is the practice of the Prophet. What is istighfar? It is to accept that he has made something wrong. Now we apply that in our personal lives. We have to learn to apply that in the life of our community as well, our organization. That we can put on a record, yes, on this day, MCB recognized that was the mistake we made. And I think from there, real progress and victory begins. Because when we do that kind of collective stuff, stuff of, we are opening the doors to change. And change we have to do. Change we must make in order to get to the greater heights. We cannot solve the problems of this community at the level of thinking and understanding at which we created them. It's a basic common sense. We cannot solve the problems at the same level of thinking and interpretations and so on. We will have to find a higher plane and level of thinking, a different paradigm from which we begin to judge things for this community of ours to achieve is a rightful place, just place, granted at the end, not by the government, but by our Creator and Master, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are really some uh, thoughts that I have to share with you. In terms of uh, uh, what are the key priorities I have, we have, I mentioned earlier and briefly, but also in my profile, where it is to build a real grassroots support for this organization. The simple question is, if I were to walk here, within one square mile of MCB's office, and ask 20, 100 Muslims, have you heard of MCB? What do you think would be the likely answer? How many would say, yes, we have? But the next stage is, what do you think MCB stands for? How many do you think would be able to relate to what this organization is about? And that is what we need to address. Again, let's do a survey, then have a program to change that perception and image and come back, do another survey and see whether there was an impact, what have we achieved and what else can we achieve. So that is about building a grassroots organization that we need to do. And to do that, we need to have open conversations. We need to begin to throw issues for conversation, for dialogue, from town to town, from city to city, where our affiliates can gather ordinary Muslims. Okay, what are the key issues we have about social problems, social issues, youth delinquency, domestic abuse, and so on, and see what is it that we can do to help our affiliates to deal with those problems. Many of them on their own cannot deal with such huge problems. But as an umbrella organization, we can perhaps build the capacity to guide them to show them, to give them the tools and techniques and programs to which they can address these deep problems that our community is facing. Uh, in terms of our relationship,
We have heard a lot about judging MCB in light of our relationship with the government. And that seems to be an important uh, issue because we know the historical background of MCB's formation. Now, I think we are part of the civil society. We heard that earlier in the panel discussion. We are part of the civil society. We are not part of the government. We are a part of the civil society, and civil society shapes and influences the agenda of the government. And it is through that force of civil society, by becoming a stronger member of it, building alliances, as Yahya Burke highlighted, this is the way for our long-term survival. We need to focus on building alliances, developing common agenda, not a parallel community, as Dr. Bari highlighted in his speech, but shared goals around which communities, diverse communities of different our faith, even other faiths, or ta'awun or al-birri or taqwa, we do ta'awun on whatever is righteous and what is godliness with all people. And through that, we let us be defined. Let us be defined by that influential organization of the communities out there which begins to influence the agenda of the government towards what is right and what is just. We are not, as he said earlier in his speech, that we remind are looking for any privilege or favor from the government, but only our rightful place based on, on justice. This is the should be the focus through which we develop ourselves. And finally, I'm not sure how much time I have, but Roshi Brahmo for the first time is quite comfortably sitting and not pushing the agenda forward, so I'm just taking liberty, but uh, I would say finally, the youths. We are a very young community. I came to this country at the age of 15. I don't speak much English, but I had to enroll at those university education and so on. But now we have to move towards young people born and brought up in this country to take forward the leadership of our community. It is predominantly, majority is of the people now in this country who are perhaps born in this country. And for that, we need to make effort. Masur highlighted our disconnect with the young people out there. Some of the major youth organizations are not represented today. They have somehow lost interest in the workings of MCB. I was told when MCB's name is mentioned from one young uh, youth organization, people are not excited, they're not energized, they don't see the purpose, the point of going and being part of us. We need to address that. And we have an excellent Youth Committee, which has done wonderful work with our report. And I think this Youth Committee needs to be supported. And its pioneering projects <coughs> need to be taken to a, to a higher level to the support of our affiliates. And I'll be very keen as Secretary General to see that area of our work really develop. Because if we can plant the seeds, this kind of uh, seeds of the need for MCV as a forum and platform to which they should bring their rich talents and support it, then inshallah we will be through. Really those are my thoughts, uh, which I just jotted down some of the points, and I would like to simply just close, saying that uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me steadfast heart, as well as yielding heart, and may he give me this, your support, grant your support, and support the communities out there. And may the sacrifices that we make he accept and bless our efforts with success in this life and the life to come. Wa'afu da'ana and fulla da'ana. Wa'alikum sallam.